So the future of the content industry is about $250 billion, and there's a dogfight to control it. Two companies, two companies that you would have heard of, Google and Apple, are apparently fighting over the future of content. $250 billion market, and who better to tell us about that fight, this dogfight, than the author of a new book called Dogfight, Fred Vogelstein. Fred, welcome to TechCrunch TV. Thank you for having me. Apple versus Google. The final installment, Fred, the killer matchup. It's a really, really big deal that these guys are going at each other. I think one of the things that people forget is that even though these two are tech companies, they're not just fighting each other for King of the Hill and Silicon Valley and in high tech. Through their software and hardware and technology, they control access to our smartphones, they control access to our tablets, soon probably access to our televisions. And, they're, and so they're not only fighting each other to control the technology on those uh, devices, but they're trying to control the content that we will see uh, going forward. And so push out five years, you may be getting the show that you love the most through Apple or through Google, not through Comcast. Fred, let's, rather than pushing out five years, let's push back five years. Is it true? Does your book suggest that Google stole Apple's idea? Well, no, it doesn't suggest that at all. Certainly, Apple suggests that Google stole its ideas for the, uh, for the Android phone. And they go at it pretty ferociously. They've been going at it pretty ferociously since 2007. Uh, but I think that what you realize when you dig into it a little bit is Apple and Google have been thinking about the future of the smartphone probably at least since 2005. And it, if you go back into the 2002, you could argue that uh, Google might have even been first. Um, so maybe Apple stole Google's idea. That's probably a little far-fetched <laughs> too. But one of the things that one of the things that you realize that I realized from working on the book is that some of the ideas that Steve Jobs touted in his iPhone presentation in 2007, the idea that the iPhone was the first full-featured, had the first full-featured internet browser on a smartphone, was a slight exaggeration that actually Andy Rubin, uh, at, who was the, one of the founders of Danger in 2001 or 2002, put all that on the sidekick, which was something that most people don't know about. So Fred, do the guys at Apple and the guys at Google think of themselves as participating in this dogfight? Do they see it as the new Cold War? I think they do. I think they like people to, I think it's certainly true at Apple. Uh, I think Apple. And in Apple, Google is the, the, the evil enemy. Um, absolutely. I mean, I think I have a friend uh, who I talked to for the book who went to a conference in 2000, eight or nine and got one of these Google jackets that he liked and he wore it around the office. And sometime around 2010, there was a lot of pressure on him to make sure that he didn't wear the jacket anymore. So instead, because he's an engineer, he actually went home and took the Google thread uh, out of the jacket. And so now if you see him, you can have to look really closely, but he has a, um, the little threads of the Google jacket. But it was, the point here is, is that the pressure on him not to wear that around the office was extreme. You, your book, Fred, is extremely well researched. Uh, so you've, you've talked to a lot of people at Google, a lot of people at Apple. Do you think this is all a bit childish? Or are, is it because the stakes are so high that the, the, the anecdote you talk about not wearing a Google jacket at, at the Apple office, are these real issues? Oh, they're absolutely real issues. I think that Google in particular wants people to think that it's not competing with Apple at all. Um, Why? 
Well, because it's in Google's interest to try to get its software on as many phones everywhere as it possibly can. But it understands that there, that if Apple gets, that this isn't just a battle over who has the best smartphone. This is a battle over who has the best network in the cloud that will allow consumers to get content, to get software, to get a whole panoply of services that uh, will keep them essentially locked in and using Google products for a long time. So Must there be a winner, Fred? Or c could these two superpowers coexist? I'd like to think that they could coexist, just personally. Well, uh, we all would. We, want, we don't want hist history. History suggests that it won't happen that way, though. Uh, if you go back into sort of the history of technology, it suggests essentially that what these guys are in the middle of is a platform war. Both of them, there's software on each of the phones and on the tablets, and they want to lock everybody into that software ecosystem. And essentially, that's those kinds of fights tend to be winner-take-all kind of and fights. And Fred, is, is history repeating itself? I mean, it seems it, it's not hard to, it, to, to think of Google as Microsoft in this fight against Apple. Well, no, not at all. In fact, there's some enormous similarities. And in fact, if you, so if you look at the fight that Microsoft had with Apple in the 1980s and 1990s, it was over Microsoft's approach to massive distribution across many, many, many devices, uh, to Apple's focus on building the whole product from soup to nuts. Uh, essentially, you have a very similar fight going on here. But you also see the, thing, the same thing happening, happening with Google and its fight with Yahoo and Microsoft over search. You see it happened with eBay and its fight with companies over auctions. You see it with uh, Facebook. Um, five years ago, everybody thought that MySpace was going to run away with uh, the social networking market. Facebook came in and uh, took it. and the idea that anybody could challenge Facebook for dominance in social media right now is preposterous. Fred, Microsoft, many people believe, was ultimately undermined by the antitrust case in Europe. Google is already uh, under a number of different investigations on the antitrust case. If Google was to win this battle, surely the antitrust issue would become even more pertinent. It might. Um, you know, Trying to predict antitrust action, though, is a little bit like trying to, it's actually harder than trying to predict the weather. Uh, it's anti well, in San Francisco, it always, it's always sunny. <laughs> well, it, it, it's, antitrust is not a technical and legal, is as much a political and economic discussion as much as it is sort of a technical and legal discussion. And so, whether or not Google, somebody goes after Google for antitrust uh, will depend on uh, the administration that's in Washington. It will also depend on the government's ability to rally public support around it to take Google on. One of the things that people forget is, is that the government went after Microsoft for antitrust violations for the better part of a decade. And it was only in the late 1990s that when the public started to come around and start to agree with them that they were actually able to successfully sue Microsoft for antitrust, if you don't have the political support to take on a popular company like Google, it's very difficult to bring an antitrust action. Fred, in this bipolar world that you describe, what, what is the fate and what advice would you give to the rest of us, particularly entrepreneurs watching, who work for neither Google nor Apple? Well, I think actually one of the things that the, one of the lessons out of the book that I think a lot of people forget is that innovation is actually messy. I think that one of the things that happens in Silicon Valley is, is that we all get caught up in putting our best foot forward so that we start to believe each other's presentations. 
and start to think that our competitors actually do have some kind of magic formula to kind of take their project from conception to release in a linear sort of way. The reality is, is that both the iPhone and the Android project were enormous, messy things that took years to figure out and the engineers were, it, people were filled with anxiety working on the project. They worked 80 hour weeks and uh, it was full of false starts. And I think one of the things that you learn from looking at this is that this is the way it's supposed to be. Um, to give you an example, people were so tense when they launched the first iPhone. The engineers in the audience were so tense about what was going to happen during the demo that they were actually doing shots of whiskey in the audience. Well, so are we, aren't we? Uh, cheers. Well, Fred Vogelstein, uh, the author of a fascinating new book, one of the major new books of the year, is out today, Dogfight, How Apple and Google Went to War and Started a Revolution. That revolution is changing everything, and it's great that we have such fine reporters as you to report on it. Fred Vogelstein, real honor to have you on TechCrunch TV. Thank you for having me.